right guys, welcome back to Nico Brothers. So for today, we're working on a 2016 Ram 1500. And then we do circle around, circle around. Da -da -da -da. So, okay. so we got this thing unloaded pretty easily. It's so awesome to have the forklift up and running because I know this has been a pain in the butt trying to unload without the forklift, but luckily that thing was running great, started right up, picked it right off, not a problem. So let's go and check out the good and then look at the bad. But before we jump into this car, let's go ahead and talk about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Jesper Jump Starter Pack. It comes with a great traveling case, that way you can just throw it in your car and don't worry about it getting damaged. It closes everything, keeps it nice and tight, so that way it's not broken during transport. Also built in this little box is an LED light, which is great to have, because you know if your car's dead, you got no light and it's usually dark at night, you're stranded somewhere, so it's awesome to have a little flashlight with you, knowing it's not gonna die. This thing has a crazy 4,000 crank amp peak, which is pretty insane, because most cars only have about, what, like two, 300? So I think that's pretty awesome for this little guy to have so much power. Why well, use old jump boxes, even old car batteries, put jumper cables to it? Those are the days of the past. Now we have nice, sleek, clean, lightweight jump boxes, that could get your car started without a problem. Being lightweight, we could actually carry this with us. So if we go on the road and we're gonna look at some cars, it's nice to have. We, honestly, it's extremely useful in the automotive world for anything, honestly. You could jump your bike, boats, whatever you need, 12 volts, get it going. It doesn't matter if it's hot or cold, this little guy will perform and get the job done. At the shop, we use a lot of jump boxes because our cars are basically dead every time we get them. It's a surprise if a car actually runs when we get it from the auction because they're just sitting there for a long time. So having a jump box like this, very important for us to have because you just got to get these cars running without wasting time. Race-like looking jump starter, honestly really smooth, very simple and easy to use. Plug in the jumper cables, put on the power button, hook it up, get your car started. Even though my battery is completely dead and disconnected, I was still able to start it, to escalate without a problem, no issue, and let it keep running just solely on the little jump box. Even though it was a big old car, this little guy definitely performed, got it done, and we were rolling. Make sure you check out yesper.com slash Nico to save 10% on your Yesper jump starter. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the good and then check out the bad. All right, all right, look at that little dent right there on the door, not a big deal, being a salvage title, that's nothing, that's normal wear and tear. We got some nice stock wheels on there, good old tires, look at that tread. It's kind of a big deal, it's an extra five, six hundred dollars depending on how much the tires are, so that's nice to have good tires. Whew, sorry guys, really windy today. But rear bumper is looking good, tailgate's nice. I don't see a backup camera, but there's a tow hitch, hookups for it. That's really nice if you're towing something. This is a V8, so plenty of power. Got our carpets there, already lined up in the bed. Cool, let's keep going around. This side's looking nice. Again, tires are good. Looks like the door's all messed up and they got it taped up, which makes sense because of the fender right there, another little dent. It just has to happen. Let's see if this side open. Sure does. All right. Back seats are here. That's nice. We got some extras with us. Definitely needs a good old vacuuming cleaned up, but no big deal. Look at that door. Messed up, but probably just replace that door. Honestly, replace the door fender, some suspension parts, which we already have. Get a knee assembly so that when you order a knee assembly, it just comes with everything you need lower control arm, shock, spring, spindle, upper control arm, even lines right there. So that's pretty cool. Nothing we've ever done before. Should be pretty simple. Knock that out. But once we take the rim off, we'll be able to tell what's really going on back there. I'll pop the hood open. Hopefully, there aren't any frame damage. Looks like the bumper did get bent in a little bit, but that's metal. Should be able to just pop that right back. Get this thing back in the road in no time. So yeah, overall, this side's looking good. Just the driver front, hit a little bit. Quick fender bender. And save this thing, put it back in the road. I already put on jack stands because I knew I had suspension damage, so I'm gonna go ahead and just take this tire off and see what's behind door number one.
Well, I didn't see that coming. I didn't know that Ram made a two-piece rim like that. That's pretty fancy. Or it's meant to break in half like that. But look, my sensor's still okay. All right. So this is some scrap aluminum. Don't need that no more. But here we go. Looks like my upper control arm's okay. Lower control arm is broken in half. Tie right end snapped right off. So let's keep digging and taking it apart. So looking at it closely, I'm happy that my brake line is actually intact. So my speed sensor is good as well. So that's pretty good. I don't need to be like splicing up and then fixing that all around. Just the lower control arm completely snapped off. And yeah, not too bad. I'll we'll have to take all this apart to see what's behind curtain number two. But so far, not that bad. Just surprised the rim being in two pieces, but that's okay. Alright guys, that was pretty simple and easy, and it's looking really good under here. It looks like a new track. Well, you know, 2016 at least. <laughs> but yeah, frame out looks pretty good. Hopefully don't any frame damage, but we'll find out once we put it on the line machine. So let's go ahead and get this knee assembly taken apart. Just got the brake caliper off, hanging around. Rotors off. Looking good though. Alright guys, just like that, that fell right off, not too bad. Unfortunately our sway bar link is bent and our parts one doesn't have it, but it's okay. Tie right end looks pretty straight, but we're going to replace the outer tie right end for sure. No big deal. But overall it's looking pretty simple, pretty basic. There's my lower control arm, <laughs> gotta get that out and install my new one. But yeah, pretty happy with it, could have been a lot worse. So, not much hidden damage, which is nice. Sometimes you catch a break. Alrighty, so out with the old and in with the new. There's my new knee assembly right there. Let's go ahead and get that installed. All right, so the suspension is installed and we picked up a new rim and tire. So let's put this in onto the truck and we're gonna check the alignment and see if our suspension's good. Alright, so we're looking at the specs. The back looks good. Let's check out the rear. So, the back all angles looks good. So, the rear 
Uh, axle is perfect, definitely happy about that. That means the frame did not diamond. Also, our camber's toe is off, but we replaced the tie rod end so we can fix that. And we have positive camber, which is a good sign. That means the frame's probably good, so let's adjust everything and go from there. All right, so we got it back inside the shop and our parts came in. So we got a brand new door. Also a fender came in and the headlights. So what we wanna do is take off this door. We're gonna test fit the new one, take off the fender, put the fender on, the headlight. And um, we did notice that we have a little bit of damage right here on the door. So we're gonna fix that. But let's just get straight to work. All right, so the primer has dried. So we're ready to start sanding. So we're gonna sand down this door. We're also gonna sand down the fender we did. Um, I'm thinking this door is matching up really nice. I looked right here, looks really nice. There's no point of getting that thing painted. So we're gonna leave that door alone and we're just gonna paint this front lip because it's gonna take us a couple of volts to unscrew it. Shouldn't be no big deal. Make the truck look a little bit better. So let's start sanding and go from there. All right, so we're inside the paint booth. We got the fender on the stands looking really good. Also, we got the door off the truck so we could save some time about taping the whole truck and it like that. So this should come out really nice. And we got the front lip. So the front lip, we're gonna have to put some bumper adhesion on it, plastic adhesion, put that on there, put a little bit of white sealer on it and we'd be ready to paint. So let's get straight to it.
So there we have, we got the fender installed, it's looking really good. Next thing we gotta do is the headlights and the front lip. We do have a lower bumper coming and some of these brackets for the headlight. So let's take it apart and go from there. All right, so finally the new headlight bracket came in. So we got two of these brackets we're gonna replace on this. Also our used bumper came in, so we're gonna replace this bumper because it's got damage right here and we got a pretty good deal on it. So let's go ahead and take off the bumper, take off those brackets, put on a new bumper and get this thing put together. All right, so there we have it. We got the front end put together. Definitely looking good, but it definitely needs a good wash. So let's go outside, give it a nice good wash, to remove all those stickers and everything like that, and see how it looks. So just like that, we got this thing washed and I'm really stoked about it. It looked, turned out really good. I'm really happy about it. And uh, as you guys know, we picked this thing up for about $5,500 with the fees and all like that. And we probably spent around eight to $900 in parts. So we got the front bumper and we got the new headlights. We got a new fender, a hood, uh, the knee assembly, and the frame was good. So all we had to do was just put the knee assembly on. We had to do an alignment. Alignment came out good. Also, there's no lights on the dash. I'm pretty happy about that. No airbags to deploy. So this was a really quick flip. So leave us a comment down below what you guys think of the build so far of this Ram that we did, this quick flip that we did. Let us know if we did a good job, a bad job, and we'll catch you guys next time.